building, but we're out here talking about manifestation this beautiful Sunday afternoon. So, um, for everybody that knows, I'm Carla Nicole, Wisdom Coach. And, um, you know, it's very, very important that we understand the importance of manifesting. Right, Satori? Very important. Very important. There is, it's like most overlooked, one of the most overlooked things, you know, for manifestation. So the reason why I wanted to, hey, what's up, Kadeza, Phyllis? Good seeing you guys, man. You know, I, I, I'm always humbled when uh, you take out your time of the day at 12 o'clock. Oh, for you. Very, very, very important. Yeah. So, so, um, welcome back, everybody. Um, let's talk about manifesting. It's not easy to manifest, but it's essential to do so. And the reason why it's so important is is because when you want to create something in your life, be it your vision, your desires, what you want, what you need, I just hop off of here. Okay, so to make sure that you understand the power that you have to be um, manifesting what you want, you want to make sure that you do so by um, and understanding that when you're manifesting, it does not happen overnight. Now, I want to talk about that because a lot of times people don't want to think about it. They just want to assume that once you're starting to get busy and you're doing and you're going, that you're going to start getting everything right away. Not the case, okay? But one of the greatest joys of manifestation is that once you manifest, you get to reap everything you've sown. So the power of that means that, look, I'm doing the work, I'm being focused, I'm doing what I have to do now and not worrying too much about what I'm going to get back for doing. So the challenge when you're trying to manifest is taking on something of that magnitude, which is doing, okay, this is the most craziest part of it, right, is doing the work. So once you start doing, okay, once you start doing, you have to realize that doing the work requires you to not worry about when you're going to get your get back. So, like I said, you got to make sure that you're mindful that taking the time and practicing doing is going to be the best thing that happens to you in due time. So understand, now it's not going to happen overnight, and hell, it took you a while, didn't it, for you to manifest some things? Yeah, the manifest, but I consider be like, you know, you know, yeah, it took several years. I mean, actually, I'm just now, I say maybe the last five years, the last five, well, I'll say the last, I'll say the last nine years, I've been seeing more things to manifest in line with things I've been trying to work on since I've been in my 20s. You know, and so I think it's very important people understand that when you when you start understanding your purpose, you know what your gift is. Um, it's very important to understand that 
you can't put a timeline on it. And that's what most people get derailed at. Because soon they go, oh, I want to do this and do this, but they put a timeline on it. And when, thing, when, inspiration, when inspiration comes to you, it doesn't come to you in the realm of time. Right. It's, it's, it's not time bound. It's, you know, so vision and inspiration and, and, and having those, if you're, if you're fortunate to have those glimpses to see yourself, what you're going to be in the future from a divine uh, revelation, it's not really in time. I mean, you might, you might realize there might be some certain time benchmarks that might, you know, that might exist that lets you realize it's on the right track, but it's not, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't come in an aspect of time. So you can't sit here and be like, I'm going to work on this until this happens. You just have to be full out, sold out, and dedicated to it, and have to really work that level of patience in it. And one thing about patience, patience is about to be consistent but the patience is just allowing you to not get off frazzled you know what's going to manifest and like me personally you know well, where does that some people might ask where is that surety at the surety really comes in on the spiritual side of things when you start understanding um, the formula to manifest or you start understanding certain metaphysical principles that you can rely on because that knowledge it, it it's immutable, it doesn't change. So you know if you're working a certain principle that certain results have to manifest, but you still don't know when what when time it is. Yeah, you when still the don't know. So you know. the power of that means that even though you're man, you're doing the work, you cannot get caught up in am I gonna get my get back today, tomorrow, next week, next year, in the next decade. You can't even you can't even bound your mind to time. So that's what's most important. You cannot get chained to the timelines that you have in your head as to when you're going to get the so-called get back or the so-called, um, I don't know, benefits for doing the work. So that's what's so important. So I want to talk real quick about awakening your gift. Okay. So awakening your gift is so important. Those of you that have been following me for a while, you do know I have a course out called Awaken Your Gifts. I want you guys to go over there. It's a free gift. It's a free course. Go over there and take it. It's vitally important because, yeah, it's vitally important that you take this course called Awaken Your Gifts because those that have taken the course will be able to follow what I'm about to tell you. So you have to pay attention to what you get from that course in order to get what I'm telling you here. So, one of the students that took my course, Awaken Your Gifts, said something very powerful to me, and, it, and she was one of the reasons that this, is, that this actually inspired me to do this today. She said on the course, she said, well, um, you know, I have a gift of cooking, but I feel like I'm burnt out from that particular um, you know that particular side of me I'm, I'm just burnt out I'm just tired of doing it I feel like I burnt out my gift and I told her something very important I said even though when you did when you started doing what you wanted to towards fueling your gift it may not be that that particular um, box gotcha. that you're putting it in you feel what I'm saying so even though you may be talented at let's say you're good in science or you're good in math or you're good at something it may not be for you to become a math teacher it may not be that you should be a, a math professor it maybe has nothing to do with that it may be something else so like I explained to her I said even though your gift of cooking is what it is you've got to see outside the box inside see the inside the way so it's very important that once you understand that your gift is what it is it doesn't mean that you have to follow the trend of what everybody else does inside of that gifting also that has other people have that gift as well so when other people have that gift 
they may have taken that path to become a professor or to become a, a police officer or whatever. But you never know that your gift can fuel you into something completely and totally different. For instance, my son, he's very good at, at, at loving cars. He has a love for cars and always has. And I told him, I said, you may not have to be a mechanic because you have a love for cars. But maybe you're gonna be a sports car photographer where Lamborghini may want to reach out to you and want you to take the take the photos of their cars. So, and they only want you to take them. You don't know what your gift is going to put you in. So we can't think that because we have a certain talent or a certain gift that that talent or gift has to be what everybody else has done. It may be something that takes you into a whole other realm. Yeah, to add to that, when you talk about the gift, a lot of people look at the gift, you know, a lot of times people question about their purpose and stuff like that. Your purpose is, it is what your role is to serve humanity here in life, you know, and a lot of times, if you're not aware, if it hasn't been divinely or really been revealed to you, it'll come to you in the form of a gift. Gift is going to be associated with your purpose. Right. You know, make it real simple. Yep. But here's the thing about the gift, like you were saying, it's really nice. I hope people catch what you're saying. I always, often, what I show and teach people um, when they're trying to manifest, you know, do things about being successful and manifest stuff. Picture your gift in the aspect of derivatives, what I call derivatives. And what I mean is this, if we have an orange, think about how many products that comes from an orange. Right. You got vitamin C, orange tablets, you got orange juice, you know, you have the actual- um, Orange flavors. Orange flavors, you know, it cleans house, cleaning products. And that's what our gift is like. Our, our, our gift has many different derivatives associated with that one gift. Yep. So that, like you said, even though she might like, I don't want to actually cook in the kitchen, Right. she might have different lanes, okay? You see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, or there's different derivatives from that. Yeah. So it's very important for people um, when they're trying to manifest to, yeah, of course they say have patience, but to be patient with themselves to discover right. what are the derivatives around yes. the gift. Yes. Because so many people, go away from their gift and all of a sudden they start manifest they, they start going in a whole different trajectory in life yeah. and then they get frustrated when they get like around their 40s right this way you see a lot of people in their 40s and, and older mm -hmm. are really frustrated or they're trying to rewind trying to recap because they built the life around survival yes you know and yes we have to survive but it's different when you're going through life purposeful yeah. and you're you know and you're really uh, walking in your truth. Part of your truth is knowing your gift and manifesting your gift right. in terms of what it has to do. Some, some of us might be blessed to build our gift to be able to fully uh, fund our, our, our lives. Yeah. Some of us might be able to you know, entertain a gift to help make major contribution to people, but it brings satisfaction and soul fulfillment. Yes. Soul fulfillment. Yes. Um, and see, that's why, that's why I say it's so important that even though you may you may be frustrated in life. And see, this is where a lot of times I think there's a lot of misdiagnoses of depression. Maybe it's just that you're you're not in your full gift. Maybe you're not in your full purpose. Right, you're not activating. And right. then you're not activating your yeah. purpose because look, at, listen to me. A lot of times we will want to be something because we feel that that's the way, that's the path we're supposed to go. But that may not be correct. You may be, like Kadeza said, for instance, she, she's a, a nurse. But what if her? What if she was supposed to be something else? Maybe she was supposed to be something else, okay? But because she has a love for medical, um, the medical field, or learning, about it, that could have taken her to a whole different path, a whole different direction. So because of that, we can't always assume that we know that this is the this is the direction we need to go, but not necessarily. See, our gifts are here to show us certain things, but we don't have to believe that this is the way, this is the only way. Uh, there's many hues, man. Just, you know, if you look at the, you know, there's many different hues of light. There's many different, there are many different lanes that's going to go to our gift. And the more he thinks about doing it, right, 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 right. Oh, yes. people don't realize this. A lot of people are like, well, what did you do? And keep saying, what did you do, what did you do? Right. Okay, listen to what I did, right? Or right. listen to what they did. You have to do. Yep. Because here's the thing about it is the next step that you're looking for or the next provision or the next insight or the next uh, 
data or the, or the guidance that you're looking for won't come if you're not doing it. And this is where patience comes back into play. Yep. Because you have to be patient and still work on with what you have available to you. Right. And being fully responsible and tapping into all the resources that's available to you at that moment. You know, right. in, within the scope of your understanding and your knowledge. As you do that, you know, that's some, you know, the old phrase, like the universe conspires. It will, because you're, because your purpose is a direct connection to the universe. Some people call it the power of intention. T intention doesn't exist without purpose. And so your purpose is going to make you more patience because you have a hope in the future. Yep. As soon as your patience is gone, your hope is gone. Yep. And you become, you become very temperamental. Yes. If you notice, yes. people are a lot more agitated in their relationships with their as parents, as co-workers. You are a lot more agitated because of the fact that you're not in your purpose. A lot of times, like I say, it's not depression. It's the fact that you're not getting your flame lit. Your flame is not lit. See what I'm saying? So it's very important to keep your flame lit so that you understand that when you are in your purpose, when you are driven, when you are focused, when you are determined, when you are ambitious to do what you are here to do, then at, at the end of the day, it's not like, oh my God, I'm miserable, I'm depressed. You don't have room for depression. Are you depressed? Nah, man, I ain't got room for it. I'm not depressed, I don't have I mean, room for depression. You know, self-motivation and self-determination quiets the anxiety inside of us. It quiets, you know, the depression. And I'm not, I'm not dismissing people that's doing depression, that's not what we're talking right now, we're, you know, so. But a lot of times, having that with all about yourself, being patient with yourself. Matter of fact, let's, let's, let's shift there. <laughs> right. Because we're talking about patience, but the biggest patient factor is, is be patient with yourself. Facts. And a lot of times, before things manifest, you have to go through the stages. Yeah. You know, and I'm telling you, like you said, I've been at this, you know, I've been at a lot of things for a long time. You have to go in stages of being patient with yourself. You have to go through stages of understanding your role of what your gift is and how it's gonna serve people. So that way when that manifestation comes, you don't bastardize it. Right, exactly. I'm gonna say it again, you have to be patient. Sometimes you gotta go through that space of patience so that way you don't bastardize your gift, yeah. you know, your whole thing that you're trying to do. Because a lot of people, when they, when they jump ahead of their patience, and they try to force their manifestation, yep. a lot of times they will bastardize what they got. And they're doing that because they don't realize that they're, they're capping they didn't off. Get the, they didn't get the lessons to, 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 to bring about, you talked about the discipline last week, right? Right. So you didn't bring about the discipline yep. that you need. And, and building so, trust last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, the building the trust. Oh, yeah, the other week you saw about the discipline, yep. I think. Yeah. And so, you, so all that stuff is relative. Yep. You know, so you cannot... The thing about it is the more you go through the process, the more patient you become. See, here's the thing about it is when you're, when you're, when you're impatient, your vision is blurred. It's hard to see. For example, go take a bike, go ride a hill, and come down that hill <laughs> and try to look right or left at the trees and tell me everything that you see compared to <laughs> you if you just up. walk down that hill, yep. you see a lot more. Right. So sometimes you have to slow down. You know, I remember one of my mentors, you know, when I was like in my, uh, in my, you know, my early and mid twenties. And he did, and I remember, I mean, every time we would sit down and talk, he was like, patience, son, patience, son, <laughs> you know, and I would get pissed. Like, <laughs> like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make some things happen. And he just like patience, but he wasn't saying it to limit me. He understood the magnitude of what I was really working and trying to do. Yep. And he understood there was maybe, there, there's some different sub lessons that you got that to you take. Go. Yep. And those sub lessons, just because you know about them, don't mean it. Nope. Until you understand them and it becomes a part of you. Yep. So when you're trying to manifest, it's about what becomes a part of you. And then you start understanding how to actualize it. So then when, they, when the spotlight comes on, you walk in it in such a level of grace on such a level of efficiency, of understanding. And a lot of people will sit back and look at you like, well, how are you doing that? Well, they understand you've been prepared and the biggest preparation piece was the patience.
Now here's something I want to point out too that I think is very important for visionaries and for people already doing the work. I want to give y'all something that's very important. When you are on this overdrive, life is in slow motion. You hear what I'm saying? You're in overdrive. So you're just going, 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 going. You can't see. And you can't see, but your life is in slow motion. You, It takes a while to catch up. So when you're doing the work and you're trying to move and trying to get stuff done and you're in a hurry and life is just on that settled pace, it's going at hour by hour, minute by minute, and we're on overdrive because we're like, I want this to happen, I want this to happen. You have to slow down and start to practice patience. The patient part about it is once you get to that place, you're like, well, damn, you won't even get to un really truly enjoy once you reach manifestation. When you're still in overdrive, you got to slow yourself down and understand. Look, when it gets to this point, once I get there, because you will, once you get there, you have to start saying, oh, okay, now I can reap what I sow. Anybody out here doing gardening or hell, crops, anything like that? You want to say something like that? All it is, is putting a seed in the ground. You're sowing, you're working. And it takes forever for those rains to come. It takes forever for your sprouts to start springing and you're still doing the work. That the is what it is. Not gonna, the season is not going to accelerate for you. The season is not going to accelerate for you. The season is already on its own rhythmic cycle <laughs> and it's going to stay in that cycle. And inside those different cycles is when things are going to appear and manifest. The thing about sowing is this. Because I know some people have different backgrounds with sewing. Sewing is, is when you think about it deeply, is a very powerful but simple thing to really incorporate part of your uh, trying to manifest formula. To sew means to put in motion. So a lot of times we, we visualize putting the seed into the ground, but to put in motion and to take corresponding action to move what that seed is. The thing about a seed is the seed means a source of development. A seed is a source of development. So you have to develop that seed by putting it in motion. So it's more than just, I'm a, because a lot of people got this idea and a lot of it comes from the you know church background. Right. You know, well, I got my seed or I got my money. <laughs> I'm going to put it here. I'm not going to do anything with it. That goes totally against <laughs> right. what, the, what the word soul means. Right. Soul means to put in action. It means to sow, to put in motion. Right. So you have to have the sources of development to put in motion. And that, that requires now, think about it, sources of development that's put in motion. That means that you're always developing mm -hmm. a something until it manifests in line with whatever you're expecting to be able to reap. And that's, symb that's symbolic of the sewing part. That's the sewing part, but they yes. missed it. A lot of people are missing the big piece because right. the seed is a source of development. Yes. You have to invest into right. that thing that you're trying to put in motion. Right. And so not you just with money, for example, but other so, energy. Right. Energy. And, and you know, you remember a couple years ago when I was, you know, like, I know a lot of talented people. And I think in our a, a first conversation we used to talk about all the time, I said, you know, when you see people that are highly talented, but it seems like they're not manifesting nothing. <laughs> yeah. And you're looking like, why? I said, they got all this going on. How come they're not moving anything? There's two things. One part is the part that ethics is out of line, but we're not talking about that today. Right. <laughs> but the other one I'm going to bring is is about they did not invest into their seed. Right. They did not spend time developing their seed. Nope. That seed could be a gift. That seed could be a relationship. That yep. seed could be education. Yep. That seed could be um, a network. It, it, the seed has many different looks. Right. But we won't understand it if we're not taking action with our gifts to recognize first of all the gift is a seed right so all of us has a gift yes all of us has and for for until the gift is materialized before that gift is before we take action upon that gift is considered potential yes. and that's the problem a lot of us walk around with all this potential but this potential never materializes no, or actualizes, because yes. because we don't put it in motion we right. don't put or i should say we don't put ourselves in motion right to develop, to develop. the seed we don't put ourselves in motion to develop the seed, and that's what. And, and it takes. That's why the time piece comes into play because and patience, because it takes time 
to develop depend on the depend on what's associated with that seed or whatever you're trying to manifest yep. you know there's an education piece right there's an awareness piece there's a skill piece there's a practice piece that you got to bring all to the table <laughs> then you gotta understand right. what environments to god put it in yep. or what environments <laughs> that it mirrors or what environment you need to build around it to manifest it right so it takes time and the first environment is yourself so if you don't have the if you got this constant um impatience with yourself which leads to you being depressed which leads to you always worrying or, or cause you to be on task and jump off task you oh, always yes. always can tell people yeah i always can tell people that that are very in off task because i can tell you got no patience because they cannot stay they can't stay stuck to a task and the thing about it is, when you're trying to manifest something that is not in your immediate now, mm -hmm. and people abort what they could do yes. because they're not patient. Right. They're not patient. And so, when you are, when what we need to be mindful of is that patience also means to still stay on task. He had a really good point. We a lot of times we'll get impatient and upset because everything's not manifesting at the time we think it should manifest so what do we do f it i'm done I'm, I'm giving up you know manifesting something you can't quit that's the funny part about it, it there's no quitting in my soul i can't quit even if, i could be dead tired real talk i could be dead tired trying to manifest something and i will not quit yeah, i will man. keep moving the early those early seeds it's like the old rock in the ocean, you know what I mean? You see, we all see the top of it, but we don't see the bottom. The bottom is big, massive, right. up under the sea, under the water. Thanks. Patience is going to be all up under that water because we got to spend all this time developing habits, developing um, routines, you know, doing all these things. We have to be patient that's going to lead to the appearance for everybody to see right. what we have or what we have to offer the world. And those behind the scene pieces is the most valuable part in the manifestation part. The behind the scenes is where the real action is at. I, I tell my son, you know, your daughter, and I, I tell <laughs> young people and, and people that want to listen, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> right. Know, I try to, because the thing is, because most people don't invest into this, top, this type of topic. You see, I mean, it's the, the views yeah, yeah, are very yeah. low. See? Yeah, yeah, people because don't, because here's the reason why. Because people start giving up on themselves, yes. you know, after 21. Yes. Statistically speaking. So, there, because why? Because people are not patient with themselves, or they either made the wrong decisions, or they wasn't aligned in the right lanes and in, in associated with what they're desiring to fulfill. So, if right. you're someone that's uh, good in carpentry, you shouldn't be over here <laughs> in the sewing lane. Right, exactly. Where you're trying to look, learn about sewing clothes. <laughs> right. That's not your lane. Right. You know what I'm saying? So people get over there, <laughs> yeah. and then, of course, you're going to be an impatient. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you're in a whole different lane you don't need to be in. So I think it's very important. Unfortunately, you know, we don't get these lessons a lot of times unless we have parents that are really insightful to tell us. Yeah. Um, but when we get adults... We get to the fray of like the flow in life and we just totally disregard our gifts. That's the worst thing. Yep. I mean, I remember once I had a you know, talk with my daughter. I told her, I said, yo, and I, I tell my, my son, I tell, I tell her, you know, hey, the worst thing you can do is ignore your gifts. Spend time trying to figure out how to work your gift, all the possibilities associated around the gift. And all the options and alternatives associated with the gift and start making your decisions revolve around that and pursue that. Because here's the thing about it. There's an old proverb that says, the thoughts of the diligent leads to plenteousness. The thoughts of the diligent leads to plenteousness. So in other words, the consistency of action that's relative to your purpose, with you being patient, is going to plenty, you're going to be plentiful for where you get to. Right. You know, because the reason why is because that's the sowing and reaping principle. That's the cause and effect principle. And that's vital. Yeah. See, a lot of times what he said, was, which was really good and very important, you got to make sure that if you are, or if you are truly wanting to spark and light your flame, 
you have to get, make sure that your lit flame is in the right is in the right environment, or it's going to get blown out. Just yeah, that simple. Quickly, you know that's the and that's the biggest frustration with a lot of people that I've, you know, especially people I've talked to over the years. A lot of times, when we start talking about trying to get them for their own success, which you own, right. you know, and, and soft plug. I got a yeah. course on that if you want to take the course on your future success. But anyway, so, but your you have to realize, once you realize what your gift is, one of the first things you gotta do early on is understand and learn about the environments that welcomes your gift. Hi, Shadrick. Right? Understand the environments that welcomes your gift. Understand the environments where you can manifest your gift. And then entertain environments that are gonna help grow the gift. On a basic level, I was like, go to college. Well, why, why go to college? But the problem is, we why we like, Nowadays, if we can say it now, and people are like, well, college is like they're failing people. Well, first of all, education is to means to draw from within to without. Yep. And so you can't be educated if it's not personal. Right. It, it, it can't be a goal, I want to make this amount of money, and I think this this interest or these abilities I have, right. I'm good at math for doing this, so I'm gonna go into this. Right. And you go and you go look for education and, and you and you feel like you've been bankrupt. Well, True education won't have any meaning to you. Like when I went, when I finished up my, you know, my education, you know, the academic side of things, you know, my first, it, it, it took different meaning when I had my purpose. Right. Okay. And so when I had my, when I knew my purpose, what we were trying to do. So when I was, you know, studying, you know, economics and all these different kind of things and you know, business and all this stuff, it wasn't. It was really about how to manifest everything what we were trying to do. Right. You know. And, and so it had a different value on it. And guess what I did? That opened up a different motivation versus right. when I went to college, you went straight, you know, high school, went to college, you know, 18. And, you know, you were like, man, I saw the hustle. Like, yo, this ain't got nothing to do with what I'm trying to do. <laughs> right. right? And, and so I was wondering, like, man, I bought that. Yo, you know what I'm saying? This got, this got to switch up. And I got to say this. Just because you're good at something does not mean that it's a part of your purpose. We can be good at a lot of things. And a lot of times we'll think, right. oh, I'm good at this. Right. Well, that's fine that you're good at that, but that doesn't mean that that has anything to do with your purpose. A lot of times we'll get, we'll jump into something, oh, I'm good at this, and you have really no true spiritual connection to that good thing you're good at. In other words, I could be good at math all day, but if I really have no desire to learn outside of just the math, math dynamic, it doesn't necessarily mean that's where my purpose should be leading me to. I could be good at something and just be good at it. It could just be that. I could just be good at it and that's it. But when you have a, a certain pull or a certain desire to want to stay vested in that particular um, thing that you're good at, then it's the, that's when you start to need to step back and say, hold on a minute, I might be on to something. Because I could be good at something all day and, and you know me, once I learn something new, I'll just run with it. Man, you're ambitious like a mother, man. <laughs> I'll like, just run. Hey, <laughs> hey. Not yet. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm yeah, real yeah, ambitious. Yeah. Once, once I learn something new, I'll get all excited and I'll go, you know, off to the deep end. And I can be good at it. But he'll tell you, I'm a perfectionist. So I'm going to try to perfect it and get it right and learn. But it doesn't necessarily mean it has anything to do with my purpose at all no and and, and, it, and that's the thing hey lisa you know that just that just add ice to the cake you got different things you're good at right. you know what i'm saying like you know like i do abstract drawing but i'm not really an artist you know what i'm saying <laughs> right. you know maybe if i maybe invest it maybe, maybe if i put in motion to to you know develop that source of the seed right maybe if I something but that wasn't really <laughs> you know um I mean, if people like, I mean, it's cool, but that's not really, right. that's, so we all have different things, but we got to really, the gift is something that, that it doesn't take a lot of force to do. Nope. And I think a lot of us, you know, I, I think due to the default in education kind of, it kind of convinced us to, we have to work real hard yep. for something and ignore what really comes easy to us. Right. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we've been convinced and we bought, a lot of us have bought into it to begin our adult life. Well, right. hold up. You know what I'm saying? They're making money doing this. And it's effortless for and them. And it's effortless. <laughs> yeah. So it's important to take what you do naturally, that's innate, 
that you ain't got to, you know, you're just naturally motivated. One thing and I, what I love about my daughter, I remember, you know, when she was doing the music and all that stuff and everything, she just did it naturally. She built her own studio. She was dropping her own music. You couldn't, you didn't have to tell her to go get the music, to go do it, write her right, music. You didn't have to tell her right. to go build her studio. You didn't have to tell her that. No. Nope. She just was doing it. And so I'm like, so, for example, and get me wrong, now my daughter's a Virgo, so, and she's very witty. So, yo, she could, she got, you know, so look at, well, you could be a lawyer. Right. She probably could. Yeah. Because, you know, she, she's very good at research, and she on the pen, she's going to debate with you. She's going to tell you what it is. Day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's going to tell you what her stance is. Yeah. But that wasn't really, uh, you know, but really was really innate to her was not argument. What's really innate to her it is her natural gift of expression. And, and she can use her, her research uh, abilities and all that stuff to put into her music and things like that. And so to make the long story short, because of her, because she probably paid attention to her gift, and I encouraged her, you know, other people's like, yo, follow the path of your gift. She was able to get a full ride scholarship. You know what I'm saying? To college to go into you know to study sound engineering into music and to produce and do things like that and you know and, and she she got a song that's out you know what I'm saying that she wrote that right. you know that she did it and produced and mixed and mastered she actually mixed she actually mastered my uh, uh smile for me yeah. track so and, and she's working doing things you know she's working she's working in two different studios and stuff like that but she has a fulfillment right and you don't have to see and that's the thing yeah. that's the power about gifting is you don't have to you don't have to be told you don't have to be you told you don't have to be told you don't have to be you don't have to have an incentive to do it you just do it because it's natural for you just like this creek see how the water just flows and i've been talking about this a lot the water just flows naturally and that's how you have to be in life just flow man if it's something that you really are good at if it's something you really are empowered to do you know when i when i when i did my when i when i created my course awaken your gifts you guys need to get over there and take it i made i made a, a very clear point which is you may have a magnitude of gifts you may have you may be multi-talented and that's fine but you need to find that gift that you want to make love to all the time because you're going to be in, you and that yeah, gift are going to be together gift, all the time. That gift is going to stand when all the turmoil in life comes at you. Yep. When all your disappointments, when people leave you. Yep. What you're going to realize is everything else is gone. <laughs> but, but that, that gift. gift. Yep. You know, and I, I've been there. Yep. Where everything else was went over to the right and everything else. What I woke up to, went to sleep to, what kept me, it kept hoping me was my gift and my purpose, my knowledge of self, and things like that. I wanted to hit something and that Kevin, Kevin talked about. Kevin, yeah, you have I a really good something. point. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to, what he said was very valid, but I want to ask him, sometimes we can be so caught up in development that we don't step. Right. We can be, because that's a trick, that's a trick we do on ourselves too. So... We can, be, we can be so engulfed in developing, 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 and never take, and, and we might miss provisions for us, a certain actions that you must take along that developing journey to help manifest and for you to gain some insight that you might need along that journey. So sometimes you might have to step. I'll give you an example. I remember, I know something not to put you, you know, I remember you was doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff, but you had to step forward. Yeah, because you were fussing. <laughs> yeah, you had, you had to step forward, you know. And so so sometimes, and, I, and understand this, I served and did a lot of behind-the-scenes work with a lot of people, a lot of known people, and it was cool. But then I got to a space, um, you remember a couple years back, I was like, look, okay, <laughs> you know, there's a point where all that you know, yep. you gotta so we spend more time accumulating knowledge and and that and that's not that's not a part of it either. Right. I mean it is but it isn't. You got to you got to accumulate the knowledge and you got to act on it. Yep. So sometimes you just got to go out there. It's not going to be perfect. This setting's not going to be perfect. Yep. But you got to have enough confidence in yourself to take on the risk 
of you making errors. Yeah. You yeah. have to take on the risk of you going to make errors yeah. on the journey because in those errors, there's also lessons too. So you don't want to sit there and learn and learn and learn and learn for the sake of being perfect. You want to make sure you understand and learn all the things you have, that you got disciplines and things like that where you can sit there and still navigate and move forward. Yeah. You know, but then, especially when it comes to manifesting, there comes a point where you just have to step and do. Well, he was the one that kept saying, you can't be in the background forever. You got to come out that shell. I was like, oh, well, I'm comfortable here. Now, let me tell you about comfort. One of the things about manifesting, and I'm going to tap on this next week, is you got to jump in the pool of unknown. It's, a, it's, 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 a, it's essential because when we don't understand the power of doing something that makes us uncomfortable, it's a reason behind that. When you get too comfortable in your life, whether it is with manifesting your vision or being a parent or all of that, you have to step into the pool of unknown. It's sometimes going to be uncomfortable. You have to do it. And you have to flirt with it. You have to be willing to flirt with the unknown. Like, he was talking about a book. I'll give you an example. I've written several books. Yeah. All right? <clears throat> I've written several books before the book that a lot of people know about, Satori Unwrap. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I remember, for the sake of the unknown, all right, and this is way back in the day before Amazon was big yeah. and all this. So this is how long ago that I've been in the game. Okay? <laughs> yeah, right. All right. But my first book that I wrote wasn't really for like I want to sell, I want to have a bestseller. Right. It was really to understand the process because I didn't have nobody around me that really could tell me about all the process. Right. Like we could talk about it. So even though I knew I had this burning passion to be able to convey my thoughts through book. I couldn't manifest that until I took action right. and step. I did some research. I mean, it's totally different back then, right. you know. But I also understood the importance of being owning your own stuff, and, and you know, I didn't want to sell my, you know, literary rights. So I had to understand about self-publishing and things like that. But then the additional lessons did not come until doing. And there was some. And here's the thing: along the journey, now. There's certain people I don't do. There's certain type of people I don't do business with. I won't say it on your line because I don't want some people to get offended. <laughs> but there's certain type of people I don't do business with. And I remember my first, well, no, my, my first major uh, book project at the time that I was going to try to do. And we, at the time, we requires this is back in the day where you had to buy a certain amount of inventory right. in order to you have your book go to print runs right, and all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, okay? that's that, right. So I've done other books previously to understand the basic, you know, um, you know, just trying to understand the process and the discipline. That was the biggest thing because writing is a discipline. Right. But I try to get involved, you know, try to, I did all this stuff and man, you know, I wasted, uh, not didn't waste, but $7,500 um, went a month, man. Wow. Okay. That's a lot of money. I'm sure at that time. Yeah, you talk about in the nineties. Yeah, that's a you know, so seventy five hundred dollars. Okay, and I wasn't balling or nothing like that. But you know, right. what I'm saying it was money that I say I believe in my gift enough. Here's another piece: you gotta be patient with yourself enough. I like to, I like to tell patient people because they're willing to invest into their gift. Yeah. Because that's what it kind of breathes. When you get patient with yourself, you you do like yo, I'm gonna invest into you know the work you've been putting in. Right. And but the thing about it was. That was still a great lesson. Right. That was a great, that was a great, that was a good experience. I didn't turn up on them. But this, right. I did, I did let them know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they lived in Oklahoma and they was, you know, but anyway, I ain't, I ain't gonna put them on blast. <laughs> this is years ago. But, but I, I put out, you gotta be, one is, like I was telling like Kevin, you gotta be willing to go forward. You're gonna, you might make a misstep. Yeah, Me, a mistake. <laughs> the, the right step I did was investing into myself. Yeah. You know, the other people, they're exchanging, they had other book projects going on. So what they were doing, they got behind the gun. So they were trying to take money coming in, Rob Peter to pay Paul. So they took my money for another well-known, they had well-known publishers, self-publishers, mm -hmm. well-known people, right? But they took my money to theirs because they took this money to pay this to do that instead of, you know, instead of the money being allotted for that. So I had no idea that they was doing that, right? Yeah. And so, so that just created a whole scenario. So then, maybe like five years later, they finally print run my book. Well, damn, by that time, <laughs> they, you know, the man, the man, I'm not even happy with the book no more. You know what I'm saying? And so, 
but it was about ownership the lessons of ownership um and the whole deal was about ownership but trying to work with people so now that added a whole nother discipline for me yeah and you know how i operate this now you know if shit is not straightforward and clear i don't really do i don't do i don't do business with you you know this is what i teach my kids i you know i, I tell my daughter i say we were talking one time i told her I said, hey you see everything straightforward right now she's like yes sir that's how business is there's no, there, there's no trickery in it. The trickery comes with people trying to hide stuff. Hide stuff, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It don't have to be that. Right. Even when I, I do what I do right now, I keep it very straightforward. I don't get to all this, these smoke and mirrors and stuff. It's not needed. Nope. Because at the end of the day, is it calls you to waste your investment. You know. And your investment should definitely be you. It should be you. You Here. are your value. You're the most valuable investment. That's yourself. Some of us go to the stock market, and, and that's cool to invest in the stock market. But let me tell you something. There's more money to be made out of the stock market when you invest your gift. Your gift is the stock. Yes, period. Your gift is the stock. Develop that gift because, for example, you might have a gift that might can bring, that might can manifest. Let's, let's give a real life scenario. A lot of us don't have enough money for retirement. Right. I'm going to hit home. Mm. A lot of us don't have enough money for retirement, right? We're on the real, I mean, the, the pace that we're on, the time value of money associated with it, it's just not enough time to, to materialize what we need for retirement. Right. But here's the thing about it is, if you tap into your gift, you accelerate that. Because you can might develop a product. Like you tell a girl that might cook. She might be cooking, but she might have a, she might have a, a bomb cake. Yeah, or something, yes. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that you can get mass produced. Yeah. And that might bring in $100,000 a year for you. And she's, for, not for even, and not, and she's not even in front of the stove. Exactly. <laughs> and matter of fact, they might license with you to use your formula so you get kickbacks. So you ain't got to do all the grunt work. Yeah. We never know unless we go and do and we're patient with ourselves to believe in ourselves. Part of believing in ourselves is being patient with ourselves. I find out Period. that I find that people that don't believe in themselves, a lot of people don't have enough patience for themselves. They're, 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 they're very they're very closely related. Well, they're, they're just they're this short temper. See, and I remember yeah. I said the short temperedness, and and, 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 and and you you're just not being being patient with you. It totally shows you on how you act with yourself, and that reflection of how you act with your children, how you act with your mate, how you act at your job. When you're short tempered, it's because you're not in your purpose, and if you're not in your purpose, it's because you haven't awakened your gifts yet. And that's fine, but that's why I made the course. Awaken your gifts. Man. Get over there work and take the kit. And your gift will work take for the course. you. Yes. Work your gift. Yep. And your gift will work for you. You gotta believe that. Period. You gotta be patient enough to believe that. Right. Work your gift, and your gift will work for you. I mean, like you know, like I do poetry. Yep. Um, I have poetic grooves out there. Yep. That's a gift. And the thing about it is, I get more attention for my poetry overseas <laughs> yep. than around people that have even followed me. You know what I'm saying? And I get people, I get, you know, I just get love in London. You know, yeah. and love, like, that's oh, cool. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. You just never know. So you, the point I make bring that is, you don't doubt your gift, man. Like we said earlier about your environment. Sometimes your gift has to be developed. But it's going. To, it might take you to a different environment. You don't know. As you long as know. you're doing, and as, yes. as long as you are investing in your gift, which means you're taking time with your gift, learning to make love to your gift, learning to understand your gift, Man, learning to bad, learning man. learning to take your time and and talk to someone that has the gift already and has sharpened it. See, here's the here's the here's the, the cue, is that somebody you know or somebody you don't know maybe already has a similar gift and you can just watch them. Like I talk all the time, you know, Live with Carla Nicole is a show, yes, but it's developed because I developed it. I'm the executive producer. Nobody produces this, I do it. But I wanted to have my own gift. My own gift is learning to mentor and, and be a coach to people. So in order to do that, I had to create my own show. I don't have time to wait for a production company and say, hey, Carla Nicole, we wanna go ahead and, and produce your show. I don't have time for that. So at this point, I gotta move. I gotta make sure that Action. that this show doesn't go and lay dormant because of the fact that I don't want to go ahead and, and I'm waiting on somebody to uh, hit my door up. No, I don't have time for that. I have lives to touch. Period. 
so with that said, you cannot sit and allow your gift to lay dormant. Because as soon as you do that, when you don't have your gift activated, then guess what? You become less of a lit flame. And you're not shining on loving yourself because your flame is unlit. So you have to be focused on what do I need to do to make sure that I'm staying lit, which means I'm making sure that I'm taking the time out to be alone. Uh oh. People don't want to talk about being alone, but you got to be alone. That's a part of it. That's a part of the process. You have to be alone. You got to be willing to be alone, man. I mean, and a lot of people. I get people asking me all the time. They're like, "Do you get tired doing what you're doing?" Or, or a lot of people want. A lot of people want my time. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they don't really understand that I don't have the time to give because I spend a lot of time in what I do. Right. You know, it, it takes a lot of people don't know the behind the scenes work that's really quick. People that's really manifesting and doing things like that. You know, you become very your time. We already know that, but time becomes very, very valuable. Even people. Oh, look at that beautiful bird right there. Um, <laughs> but uh, the. The, the time that's your currency yeah. you know what I'm saying and, and that time of being alone um, is that grounding piece where you get clear to be able to get the directions you're trying to do especially if you're creating things from an organic level yeah. you know you can't you, I mean you just can't that's the very beginning you, you can't go out and be kicking it still see the thing about me when I was in my 20s man, I wasn't going to clubs and, and strip joints and stuff like that you know what I'm saying? A lot of times, me and my one brother, you know, we were spending time going to this uh, college library, sitting there reading philosophers. You know, just reading on different things. We were sitting there just, just vibing it. We was on a different page. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the thing about it is, I remember in him, he, he was able to acquire several real estate. You know, he got into real estate. So he had like, I think like 10 properties mm -hmm. that he got into, you know, and then, you know, the night. I mean, we're only going to be the output of what we put in. Yeah. And, and and not just what you're putting in, but being patient in an in-between time before the output comes. Yeah. So you got to invest into yourself. And I, I mean, we was doing that. And I remember him and I were rapping one time. We seen all our kids are grown. You know, and it's funny. We're sitting back looking back, you know, as, as elder men, like, man, like, wow. Remember we talked about this and this 20 years ago, and this, this and this, and this, this and this. And we're like, yeah, you know, but man, you know, it seems like things are in good stride now. Because the thing about I know about him and myself, we never strayed away from our gifts. Well, and, and, and see, you were at that point, you were already manifesting. So when they were manifesting what they were doing, Life was moving, but it was moving at a slower pace, but they were ahead of the game. See, they're talking about 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, but we so, were way so, ahead of the Right, that's what I'm saying. So life was moving slow, but your, but your ambition and your desire and your gifts that you were pouring and sowing in was still, was still getting, act, you know, it's getting activated. So with that said, he didn't stop and say, well, I give up. The hell with it. I'm not getting no nah. get back. I'm just gonna say never mind. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. do that with your gift. You got to keep moving. So that's very important. You got to believe in that, man. You got to be patient enough to understand that that gift is is going to materialize for you. It's going to work for you. But it's and let me say this. Let me put accountability associated with it. It won't work for you if you haven't developed the seed of it. Right. That's the very. That's the most important piece. That's why people do not manifest. You've got to spend time developing your source of development. You've got to invest into that. And if you, as you do that, then the gift is positioned to work for you. Yes. But it's not positioned to work for you if you don't invest into development of that gift, of yourself, and everything associated around it. It's just that practical. You can, I mean, and I'm, like I said, I understand the spiritual things and manifest things, but you cannot skip that. Nope. That is a part of the process, point blank. And as you as you fall in love with that, you'll get caught up with time. See, I fell in love with the process. One thing I used to, when I used to coach, I used to, I used to help develop young guys and try to I help guys get to go play college basketball that might be got overlooked by coaches and stuff like that and help them do like skill training. We do a lot of stuff. And one of the things, man, we took maybe overlooked guys and had them high performing teams. And the reason why we was able to do that was because. We encourage them to love the process of development. 
And I and it wasn't just for the now, and that but also, as a coach, I knew it was going to help me as young men mm -hmm. as they got older. Yep. And sometimes when they come and talk to me every now, they be like, "Yo, Coach G, you're da da." And I I see their determination in them because the thing they always had was they always fell in love. Well, they fell in love with developing. So that's a way to that's a way to inspire more patience. Yes. The way to inspire it it patience. Yes. yes. Basically, fall in love with the process. Fall, fall in love. With the process, and, yeah. and again, that that goes back to be becoming more present in the now. Yep. Because when you are manifesting, you're all in the future. Like I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get that. And, and it will frustrate you. And that. that will be very. That was happening to me when my mentor was. He said, "Be patient. Yep. Be patient." The part was. I was like, man, I'm trying to do the man gang, man. I'm trying to, yo, who do you, you know, but when I started falling in love with the small details, I fell in love with the small steps before the end step. I started falling in love with the whole process and got and romanticized that. Yep. You know, and then, like you say, and just, then you're more in the present. You're in the when present, we live, man. When we live in the future, or we live a lot in the past, I say this all the time, you've got to get present. This is why meditation is so important. When you are in the now, when you can sit and get rooted in being present to the right now, you start to realize, man, I'm taking advantage of the now because guess what? Not only are you going to manifest, but you're also not going to have a lot of regrets. Yep. Period. You're not going to have a lot of regrets. So listen, guys, we're out of here. I appreciate everybody that's here, came on. Make sure you share this video. You know, manifestation is very important. Um, you got to be sure to start to take take light of what's important in your life. You know, you don't want to get rooted in, oh, ho-hum, let me just live day by day and just exist. Existing, real, existing now, well, you will have a life of regret when you get to that point where you're in the life is coming. about all about the future get rooted in the now and and the thing about it is when you're in the now you could you start to enjoy the now you start to enjoy the process of learning how do i get to where i need to get just take step by step see we're skipping steps and then we don't want to get rooted in what we need to do okay so again i'm going to put the link in here for awakening your gifts i'm also going to put the link in here for satori's course called owning your future success I'm also going to uh, explain to you guys, it's very important that you guys take a take a mental note of how important it is to do the work now. There's no do-overs in life, period. So no. you got you to gotta be ready and get rooted. Thank you, Satori, for being here. No, no you know, it's, it's, it's vitally important people understand. If you don't know this guy, Satori Seals, make sure you send him a friend request. He is somebody that you need in your back pocket. He's, he's manifesting right now his his purpose, his his plights. He's uh, all over the place. I can't tell you all of his titles. It's a lot. But anyway, um, so make sure you get lit. You know, this is about the flame here. You know, the flame, shine on loving yourself. It's very important. You are the flame. All right? So get lit. Stay lit. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Have a great day, guys. Bye.